Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jaron. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial today. Um, just kind of an overview or a quick start to the program MainStage. Um, if you don't know what MainStage is, um, it is Apple's partner program to Logic Pro X. Um, basically just a whole bunch of music recording and music performance software. Um, MainStage to me is by far the best software on the market for um, for what it does and especially for the price main stage is thirty dollars um, I think on the Apple Store um, that's a steal uh, for what all you get through this software so I'm gonna be walking you guys through how to get started in main stage what all you need to know um, and what all you need to do to get your rig started through main stage so um, first thing is to open up main stage uh, so once you open that up, <clears throat> um, it'll open my concert um, that I have saved, but we'll start a new one here. Alrighty. So we'll go new. Alright, when, uh, when this window pops up when you first open main stage, um, I would suggest don't do this quick start because if you do that, It'll throw up a whole bunch of different sounds for you that you probably don't want. Um, so what I would do is just go to keyboards and then go to keyboard minimalist. Um, this will give you the most options um, for customization um, that you can use to make your rig your own. Um, so just click on that. <clears throat> That'll open up, and then you'll see um, you'll see that there are basically nothing. Um, there's basically nothing in here. Um, so far, so you basically have a clean slate to work with. Um, the only thing that you have is a quick electric piano that it automatically loads up for you. So here's what we're going to do. Um, in main stage, there's three windows or three layouts that you can use. There's this edit window, um, there's a layout window, and a perform window. So basically what these are is the layout window is where you go um, to set up all your controls. So this is where you put your piano in here. This is where you put um, all your controls. If you're using a MIDI controller, it's where you put all your um, your knobs and your faders and everything that you're using um, in your rig you want to put in here. So say for instance if I'm using, um, so I'll just go ahead and delete all of this just to literally start off with a clean slate. Um, so say I'm using um, an Akai MPK 249 uh, so I have a 49 key keyboard. So what I'll do um, is go to this panel controls. Um, actually, sorry, I'm going to shelf controls. I'm going to do a keyboard. I'm going to drag that up. You see how it kind of fits perfectly in there. Um, then you're going to go over here to number of keys. Um, and you're going to adjust that to, to how many keys are on your keyboard. So if you're using just a normal keyboard, it's going to be eight, a full 88. Um, you're going to use a full 88 keys. However, I'm not, my keyboard is only 49 keys. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in 49 and then um, you'll kind of go there, adjust it to how you want it. Um, and then you're going to look down here at this display keyboard layers. Um, I like to take that off because basically the keyboard layers are here and when you go back into the other parts of main stage, it's all going to stay there and I don't like that so I'm going to uncheck that. I mean, and you'll see it takes that away. So I have my keyboard in there. It automatically puts a sustain pedal and a um, and a a volume pedal in there for you. I don't use a volume pedal. I only use a sustain pedal. So you can go ahead and delete that and just put a sustain pedal right here back in there um, for your rig and kind of make that a little bit smaller here. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So I have my keyboard in here, um, and of course it comes already with a um, pitch bin and a modulation wheel already stock in here. So I'm going to leave that because I have both of those on my keyboard. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to panel controls and put all my, uh, my faders in there. So I have volume faders on my MIDI controller that I can map um, to different volumes of all my sounds. So basically what, what I mean by that is when I go into main stage and set up all my sounds, um, I can map out or assign um, the volumes to be controlled by these faders. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to I have eight faders on my MIDI board, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Group Controls, eight vertical faders, and then just drag that guy in right there. Um, just for room purposes, I'm going to kind of make that a little bit smaller. Alrighty. All right, so now I have my uh, my sliders in there, my faders in there. Um, so then on top of my sliders on my MIDI keyboard, I have um, eight round knobs right here. You can either do eight round knobs or eight directional knobs. There's really no difference in them. It just, uh, it just depends on what you have on your keyboard. Mine are round knobs, so I'm going to do eight round knobs in here. I'm going to slide that in there. Um, and again, just for room purposes, I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Have that all line up with the sliders. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have that set up, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in a couple other things in here. Um, a couple, a couple things that I, I just like to have for safety purposes. I have drum pads on my MIDI keyboard, but I rarely actually use them. The only thing I use them for um, are for like my panic button and my tap tempo which I'll show you how to do later. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and put in um, what we see right here is a horizontal meter. Um, what I'm going to use this for, I'm going to put this up top, what I'm going to use this for is to monitor my CPU load. So how much um, how much of my computer's CPU I'm taking up, that's really important because if, if, you, if you overload that um, your computer is going to waz out um, and your your rig is going to um, mess up on you. So you want to try and keep that down. So I like to monitor that to make sure I'm keeping that down. Um, so now that I have that in there, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and, um, and kind of look for this. I don't know exactly where it is. Here we go. Um, a MIDI activity button. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this in. And basically what this guy is, um, all this is is... You don't have to assign anything to this. This will just light up whenever it's receiving, um, whenever it's receiving anything from MIDI. So if you're using your MIDI controller or even your your keyboard, uh, whenever you play a note or move a slider or anything, that'll pop up. And I just use that for safety purposes. That way, if my if I'm in the middle of a worship set and and my rig starts to kind of go crazy on me, um, I can see if it is. You know, a software problem, or if it's a hardware problem with my keyboard, um, that way I can see. You know, I'll play notes and see if it's lighting up. If it's lighting up, I know it's not my hardware, so I can kind of do some process of elimination there to know that it's not my hardware. Uh, so next, what you're going to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and put in um, a button right here. Um, I'm going to use this button uh, for a couple different things. I'm actually going to put two in there. And I'll show you what I'm going to use these for here in a second. But I'm just going to put in there um, to do what I need to do with them. So now I have my whole setup in here. I have everything what I or I have everything that I need. There's a whole bunch of more stuff you can put in here. If you're an organist, you can put some organ draw bars in there. Um, you can put some text in there um, to kind of label these. And I would highly suggest labeling everything you put in there just so you can remember. Um, if you have a foot switch for your keyboard, there's something there for you. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different stuff you can put in here um, that you that you can use for your rig. Um, this is all I need right now, especially if you're just getting started in main stage. I would highly suggest. I mean, this is actually probably a little bit advanced um, if you're just getting started off with main stage. Um, but I trust that you guys can can go along with me. So I'm gonna stick it with here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my keyboard and so now that I have everything in here, I have to get all of this stuff to align with my MIDI keyboard. Now how you do that is I'm simply going to click on this keyboard um, and you're going to come over here to the screen control inspector and what you're going to do is you're going to click assign. What this button does is basically um, you're going to click this button and whatever you do on your MIDI keyboard that is what's going to be assigned to this. So um, Obviously, I want my keyboard to be matched up with my keyboard, so I'm going to click Assign, and I'm going to get I'm going to hit a couple buttons on 
or a couple keys on my MIDI keyboard. Um, and you can see that my uh, my keyboard pops up here, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, and what I'm going to do is the lowest key on here is really low. Um, my lowest key is not even close to that, so I'm going to go ahead and um, unassign this. Hit learn here um, to where it'll come back. So now you see that it's showing up on here. Um, all my keys are, you can kind of see they're pressing down um, as I play them. They weren't a minute ago because that lowest key was so low. So that's really important. However many keys you're using, um, set that lowest key um, to where that'll match up with your MIDI keyboard. So now you can see that my MIDI keyboard is assigned. Um, it's, it's recognizing it and you can see, as I was saying before, that MIDI, um, MIDI activity button's lighting up every time I hit this. So go ahead and unclick assign here. So what you're going to do next, um, and I think it automatically, once you do that, it automatically assigns your modulation and your pitch bend wheels. Um, and I think it automatically um, does your, your sustain pedal for you. So that's nice. Um, so what you're going to do next is I'm going to assign these faders. So you're going to go about the same thing, the same process. Um, so you're going to go over here to assign click assign and then just move that slider up and down. Uh, you're going to move that slider up and down and then that'll um, you'll you, you'll see that is working and you just hit assign again, go to the next one. And there's a actually it's quicker to do it this way. So um, I'll hit assign and see that it's going there. I'll move to the next one and you don't even have to unclick assign. You can just move to the next one. Um, move to the next slider and then slide. You see that it's working. Move to the next one. You see that it's working, and so and so you just keep moving down uh, until you find um, that everything is done here. Okay, and I think I accidentally assigned my keyboard to that slider. So I'm going to undo that, remap that out, perfect. So then again, you're going to do the same thing for all your knobs here. That it gets assigned perfectly. Um, once you, when you're doing this, you'll see that it kind of like jumps around. Don't worry about it. Um, it. It's gonna, it'll work. It's just I don't know why it does that. It just does, but it'll, it'll work perfectly once you get into the edit mode. Um, so you just map these all out. Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and map out these buttons. So basically, what I'm gonna use these buttons for is what I call a panic button and a um, and a tap tempo button. Basically the panic button, um, there are sometimes when you're when you're in the middle of a set, you hit a key and it's and for whatever reason this doesn't happen just with main stage, it happens with you know whatever keyboard rig you're playing with. Um, you just get a sustained note um, and it and it won't stop playing and it, especially if you're playing like a synth or a pad or something like that that's really not good. Um, so instead of having to shut down your computer and shut down your whole rig and unplug everything, um, this panic button allows you just to hit it and it and it cuts off all MIDI signal that your computer is getting. Um, so it's a really nice tool um, just to be safe. Um, that way, if that does happen, you can just hit that and your rig is you know reset. That way, you can uh, start playing again and it's not a whole lot of um, a lot of ugly ugly. Uh, stuff that you have to do to get it reset. That's what I want to do is come over here um, to this button and I'm going to assign this to what I call my tap tempo. Um, I use a lot of um, you know arpeggiated synths and um, tracks and everything within main stage um, so I have to set my tap tempo um, and I can tap the button whatever I'm going to use for that I can tap the button to the beat of the song and it'll tap you know, or it'll um, It'll automatically measure out that tap tempo to my arpeggiated synths and all my pads and everything. That way, everything's aligned perfectly. Um, so that is basically um, what I'm going to do with those. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assign these. Um, so I have a couple. I'm going to go ahead and use drum pads on my MIDI keyboard for these. Um, so I'm going to hit assign and hit that button a couple times, and that works perfectly. Um, I'm going to come over here hit assign, hit this button a couple times and you'll see that it, it recognizes that immediately. Um, so now I have everything set up within the uh, the layout window. Again, the layout window basically is just setting up your rig, um, aligning everything to 
what you want to do and actually I'm going to want to do a different color um, in here so let me go ahead and highlight everything and you'll see there there's this color that pops up I really like this uh, this kind of blue right here so I'm going to go ahead and just do that that's just for my own personal use you can do whatever color you want to um, but that's what I like to use so that's the basics of the layout tab um, in the next video I'm going to show you um, how to work with the edit and the perform tabs um, but for now that'll do it thanks for watching this guys go ahead and hit over to um, to the next video though there, there will be a link in the description to go to the next video um, so definitely check that out um, check out all my other videos on jarenarchermusic.com um, and check out all my patches for me so you get you started off in the right direction see you next time